There's a school of thought that says that all our troubles come from thinking. If only we could learn to stop thinking, trying to figure things out, and just be with things as they arise and pass away, that would be okay. But that wasn't the Buddha's approach. I mean, look at all the suttas in the canon, all the rules in the Vinaya. Those didn't come from someone who didn't think. They came from someone who knew how to think. And one of the first lessons in learning how to think is learning how to de-think. It doesn't mean stopping thinking, but just questioning your thoughts. It's Dogen who said that that was the definition of Zen, was de-thinking thinking. The kind of thinking that takes your other thoughts apart. Because we have a lot of problems that come from our habitual ways of thinking, and trying to solve them within those habitual ways of thinking does lead to more problems. In cases like that, you have to ask yourself, well, what are the assumptions that underlie your habits? And for most of us, this is pretty murky. We haven't stopped to examine our assumptions. Dogen, when he was talking about de thinking, thinking, basically said, try with something basic when you're sitting here. You have your awareness, you have your body. Is the body in the awareness or is the awareness in the body? That's taking just sitting as your question, as your problem to think through. You start with asking yourself, well, what, what do you assume? And then you ask yourself, what if the assumption was not right? What happens if you question the assumption? What happens if you try the opposite assumption? What would that be? This is where we get into the field that's called metaphysics. The word metaphysics literally means before physics. It comes from Aristotle. He was interested in explaining the sciences, and he started with physics. But before physics, he was very clear about what his assumptions were. It turns out that his assumptions were based on biology. The idea that there are classes of animals, and within those classes you have species, and then you have individuals. And if you know something about the general class, then you can intuit something about the individual. Well, it turns out the world is not structured that way. But for a long time, those assumptions ruled the West. It was only through breaking through them and questioning those assumptions that people began to make new discoveries. So it's a good lesson. Try to be clear about what your assumptions are when you're talking to yourself and say you're critical of something that's going on inside your mind. Well, what are you assuming? When you start getting critical of things outside, what are you assuming? I think I've told you the story of the, the Buddhist scholar who said he couldn't understand that the Buddha learned equanimity in his awakening, but the idea that he found the deathless and went to total and binding after his death, that didn't make any sense. How can you know something that's totally unconditioned? After all, we're conditioned beings. So I asked him, how do you know we're conditioned beings? Isn't that an assumption? Well, it's scientific, but then science makes a lot of assumptions. Now, sciences nowadays seem to be less clear about their assumptions than Aristotle was about his. The Buddha himself didn't start with an assumption about what we are. He started with a problem. There is suffering. So what is the suffering? What's causing it? Can it be put an end to? And as he explored that issue, he discovered it opened up a lot of unexpected things in his mind. And he found that it was possible to experience that something is outside of space, outside of time. As he said, there's no coming, no going, no standing in place. 
no here, no there, no, no, no between the two. None of the activities that define time, none of the relationships that define space. And then having had that experience, then he had to come back and rearrange everything. The question came up the other day, what was the Buddha doing during those seven weeks after his awakening? And what we're told is that he experienced the bliss of awakening. But part of that bliss may have been realizing that he was in a position to sort through all of his assumptions, throw out the ones that didn't make any sense anymore, based on what he had learned, and see what was left. But it did require that he think his way along his path. He tried different paths, and in each case he developed Conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment that was appropriate to that particular path. And then when it didn't work, he had to ask himself, well, why? That required some thoughts, because that was going to determine what his next path was going to be. But then what kind of thinking was right and what kind of thinking was wrong, that was what was confirmed in his awakening experience. Which is why when he taught the path, the first factor is not right knowledge, it's right view. In other words, you adopt certain opinions that are going to be useful on the path. Now they get confirmed with awakening. But in the meantime, you have to have some opinions. The Buddha teaches you the basic principles. Look at the seven sets and the wings to awakening. He left that behind as his basic teaching. Really get to know those well and think them through. Why is it that in some cases, some of the lists you have discernment coming first and then virtue and then concentration, and in others you start out with Virtue, then concentration, then discernment. Or mindfulness, discernment, and then leading to concentration. What's going on there? And what patterns are consistent? You'll find that one pattern is always consistent, that mindfulness comes before concentration. In some cases it seems to be automatic, although in the factors for awakening there are steps in between. Starting with right mindfulness, and how do you use discernment to develop? right mindfulness into right concentration. So you think about that, and then you try to put these things into practice. The canon lists three kinds of discernment. There's the discernment that comes from listening, or that would include reading. Then there's the discernment that comes from thinking. And then the discernment that comes from developing, i.e. developing qualities in the mind. And you need all three. The first two inform your idea of what you're going to be doing. And John Lee makes the point that when you're sitting down here to meditate, you put the first two aside and you focus totally on, say, the object of your concentration. But as you go through the day, there will have to be times when you have to think. When things are not going well in your meditation, you don't just sit there and say, well, I'll just accept the fact that they're not going well. You've got to figure them out. What's going wrong? So you have to ask yourself, what are your assumptions about what's going on? What are your assumptions about your mind? What are your assumptions about the path? Are they right? What would happen if you changed your assumptions? And if you don't know what your assumptions are, well, just make up a couple of assumptions and then experiment with him. There was a thinker in the, in the European Enlightenment, his name was Diderot. He wrote a series of books. And the people who studied Diderot were always presented with the problem that the different books he wrote sometimes were extremely contradictory. So what was going on? Was he simply changing his mind a lot? Or was It turns out that what he was doing, he was engaging in thought experiments. 
said, suppose you assume X, what, follow, what would follow from X? Then he explored that. What would follow from Y? He explored that. He was looking, he was searching. Well, that's a lot of what we have to do. When you're trying to figure things out, you have to ask yourself, well, the problem may be something that I'm assuming that I haven't articulated to myself. So what are my assumptions? And when you can pinpoint something that seems like an assumption, ask yourself, well, what would happen if I assume the opposite? Or something that's says in your mind that this is really important, what if it's not important? What if something else is important? One of the big problems in the history of Buddhist thought is the idea that we have to figure out what reality is and then we figure out how we act within reality. But the Buddhist approach was different. He took action as the basis. And then issues about the rest of reality would fall under that. I like the question of whether dependent core arising happens across lifetimes, in other words, if it's happening in the world, or is it happening just in the mind? But it turns out that the mind and the world are happening in dependent core arising. So when you switch things around like that, then explore the implications and maybe learn something that would be useful in the path. So it helps you to figure out when you're coming across an impasse, what's the problem? And if those aren't the particular answers, well, figure out what is. Question your assumptions. Dethink your thinking. Take it apart. Take it apart in a way that allows you to see, well, what are you assuming? That's the kind of thinking that solves problems. And then when you think you've got a, a good possible solution, okay, then you put it into practice, see what works. That's the pavana mayapanya, the discernment that comes from developing. But you can't just meditate without thinking. Because a lot of discernment comes from figuring things out where your attachments are, why you're attached. Those five steps the Buddha lays out to figure out what's the origination of the problem, where does it come from, within the mind. How does the problem stop? How does it start up again? And why do you dig it up again? What's the allure? Can you see the drawbacks? That requires both the developing qualities in the mind and thinking through, because sometimes the mind will say, well, I'm attracted to this because of X. Well, are you really attracted to that because of X, or is the mind just lying to itself? You question things, you try to figure them out by questioning your assumptions, de-thinking your thinking. It's an important part of the path. 